Hi, everybody. We're back here at the Silicon Slopes Tech Summit. I am sitting here with Les Pardue, the CEO and founder of Mystery Escape Room. Les, thank you for joining us. We're so excited to talk to you today about your business. Yes, I'm glad to be here. So tell me, um, you know, I'm very interested in hearing, you know, sort of how you came up with the idea of creating Mystery Escape Room. Tell me about the company and, and how you got here. Well, we started, uh, now it's been seven years, I can't believe it's been that long, but I started out uh, finding out about escape rooms through a consulting opportunity that I had with a group out of Europe. They were in Leeds, England, and they were creating escape rooms. And my background is in video games, and they wanted help with the puzzles. They wanted to, and flow, how the game would, would work, and so they asked me to come in and consult, and I'd never heard of an escape room before. But as soon as I heard the concept, I thought, wow, this is really fun. I should do that here. And so we decided to create escape rooms here in Utah. And now we've expanded to a couple of states. And uh, with our online events, we're all over the world. So that's really fascinating how the timing of your online mystery escape room technology, um, how it was timed so beautifully for COVID. So tell me a little bit about the, the work that you're doing with, or how things took off for you, how the business was impacted. Well, it was really scary when COVID happened. Um, we were shut down. I mean, my revenue went zero in just a matter of days. And uh, I remember walking out the door and locking and wondering what we were going to do as a company because nobody could come in, you know, with, with the pandemic. But about two and a half years before COVID happened, we have this research partnership with Carnegie Mellon and they came to me and said, you know, teams are dispersing. They're, they're not in one place anymore. You've got people scattered all over the planet sometimes. And can you build something that would work online? And so we started building that way before COVID hit. And at first it was awful. I mean, you know, it was, it was not a good, uh, game, but we kept refining it and kept working on it. And about the time COVID hit, people were were really starting to like it, and that really turned it it on for us. Uh, some of the first adopters, which are you know your consulting groups like uh, Boston Consulting Company, Bain and Company, Ascension, all of those guys started coming to us and asking us, can we do team building events? It took off from there. In the last year and a half, we've done over 12,000 online events for groups from 40 different countries. We've, uh, we've done team building events for 56 of the Fortune 100 companies and hope to be able to get all of them. Um, but it's, it's really been quite a ride during this pandemic time. Uh, it, it, turned, it saved us, really. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds like the timing worked out in an interesting way with, with the pandemic and, and the need for, it sounds like companies needed a way to still engage their employees and do team building, but in a virtual setting. And so they turned to you all to help create that experience for the team. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. And, and because of our understanding of what companies needed, because we do a lot of in-person team building events, uh, we were able to actually craft the puzzles and the design of each game so it would focus on different aspects of team development. So we have one that is all about communication. We have a, an event that's all about cooperation and how to work with each other. We've got, we even got one on learning agility and how that plays a factor, which is really great for escape rooms because it's, you know, what do you do when you don't know what to do? Well, in an escape room, it's all new. That's really cool. Now, you also, you know, we were talking earlier about the work you're doing with Carnegie Mellon and the interesting findings you're, you're seeing when it comes to corporate teams versus families versus strangers doing escape rooms together. Tell yeah. me a little bit about that. Well, we, we started out um, tracking what people do. And if you understand the science of observation and how you watch teams to understand human performance and uh, human behavior, 
uh, we were doing the same thing that they would do in a research study. It's just our production value is a lot better. And our puzzles are more fun. Sure. Yeah, so they're more engaging. And so Carnegie Mellon became our partner. Anita Woolley, who is the, uh, our research partner there, she's one of the top researchers in this area in the world. And she and us came together and we decided that we were going to use our escape rooms as a laboratory for studying human behavior. And we started this about four years ago. We've collected well over 5,000 teams, not people, teams. We have a huge database of how people perform with each other in a problem-solving situation. So it's not management of day-to-day -day tasks, it's how do you solve problems, which is what companies need, okay? And what we found is, is that the more hierarchical the relationship, so the management style plays a huge role in how well a team performs. And we divided it, we, we decided we were going to segment our audiences, so we looked at, at groups that came in that were all in the same family. We looked at groups that were just groups of friends. We also looked at groups who were from companies, you know, who came in as a work team. And we looked at groups who met in our lobby, and this, uh, they'd never seen each other before. And the fascinating thing is, is that the more hierarchical the relationships, in other words, the more structured your relationships among the team, the worse they tended to perform. Why do you suppose that is? It's a hesitancy to come forward with your ideas. So it's actually the detriment of the team in problem solving when you have a very hierarchical team. Yeah. Well, what was fascinating to us is because we, we study all age groups, okay. okay, which is different than most studies. When we saw 10-year-olds, it really the light came on. We had this room, 90% failure rate. So only 10% of the groups succeeded. We had a group of 10-year-olds come in and solve it. And it just kind of set us back and thought, we got to redesign this because, I mean, it's not that easy. So <laughs> they do it. And if you ever watch 10-year-olds, I don't know if you have children or not, how long does it take a 10-year-old to get an idea before it's out their mouth? Yeah. Right. It's immediate. Right. That, there's no holding back. Right. And that's what we saw. The groups who, who express their ideas instantaneously and work through those ideas, they're the ones who, are, who succeed the most. The ones who, I don't know if I want to say this because of I don't want to look dumb in front of my peers, those are the ones who fail. Amazing. So, so you had those corporate teams that mm -hmm. came up with that, and then you had also mentioned families and the meeting in the lobby. Tell me about the success rates of those. Okay, so families do the worst. They have they the, the most worst. hierarchical arrangements of relationships in a family. I mean, it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so their 34% success rate overall, and this is over 20 different room designs. So it's, it's not just like one particular type of puzzle. This is across the board. Um, the next worst performing group are corporate groups. They're 30 percent, they're 37 percent likely to be able to get out of the room. The, uh, we see a, a good jump with friends. So groups of friends, people that are just coming to have fun, their success rate is 42 percent. But groups of strangers, people who meet for the first time in our lobby, their success rate is 46 percent significantly higher. Yeah. So something's wrong. You think about it. What was really amazing to me is, is I took a look at our best performing teams. Okay, so these are teams that set the record in each one of our escape rooms. So we know that that's how fast it can be done. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the benchmark. Mm -hmm. I compared that to the average performance of all the corporate groups that came through. 46% difference, 46% hmm. productivity difference. That's big. That's big, that's huge. Yeah, I mean, I know companies that would love a 1% increase in productivity, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And this is not productivity from the standpoint of daily tasks. 
This is productivity and creativity, innovation, and all of the things that are so critical to being successful nowadays. And communication. Well, yeah. Be having yeah open, uh, open environment to communicate ideas and thoughts. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and it's being proven in the data. I mean, you can't lie. Data doesn't lie. We didn't coach these teams. We didn't do anything different with them. It, it just shows in the way that it's happening. And if we're going to change how we do this, we've got to change how we manage. We have to change how we manage in a problem-solving situation. Mm -hmm. I think we do really well with the daily task stuff. I mean, we've had years of practice with that. I don't think companies do as well when it comes to how do I inspire innovation. Fascinating. I mean, who would have thought that a super fun, cool team building activity that you could do during COVID especially, but any time, um, could turn into such meaningful data that could be used in companies? I well, think it's it, super interesting. Yeah, it, it was fascinating. Well, I come from the video game world, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so my teams are made up of game programmers. Okay, on the geek scale, that's pretty big. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, game uh, artists, very different personalities there. We also have mu musicians and game testers. And then you add production managers to that. Okay, if you can find five more divergent personalities than that to manage, I'd like to see what company that is. I bet, yes, okay. I'm sure. And uh, so when I saw the dynamics that were happening in an escape room, I just knew that this was where we could really understand what goes on when people try and work together. Yeah, yeah, that's fascinating. So what's next? Well, we've got a lot of things that, that are next. I mean, one of the things that we're looking at with this is how can we really improve companies with online teams? You know, it's a real challenge to try and get your team to be cohesive when they're not in the same place. You know, it's even a bigger challenge than it is, you know, with the group there. How do I get my teams to work together? How do I get them to communicate together? All of those types of things. And so we're looking, when we design our escape rooms, we're actually using the same tools that they use when they collaborate with each other. So you know, they're using uh, things like Google Docs, you know, that everybody can see at the same time. We're using Zoom meetings or Google Meet or Microsoft. I mean, it doesn't matter. We use all of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, whatever the, the company's currently using, we use it. And we're really trying to figure out what it is that we can do to help teams not only have a wonderful time, because really, at the end of the day, it's all about being fun. Right. Yeah. But still gain those skills through a fun activity of learning how to collaborate and work together to solve major problems. So next is developing, uh, building that out, that whole offering out? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Each one of our events, I mean, we're really focused on, it's much deeper than just creating a fun series of puzzles. It's what does each puzzle teach and how do you design the puzzles in such a way that it really causes people to have to communicate with each other or to have to cooperate with each other as they work together. That's absolutely fascinating. I am just so glad I got a chance to visit with you today. I really appreciate your time and also I'm excited to see, you know, what's, you know, what the next rendition of Mystery Game, you know, the escape room um, looks like. Well, yes. Yeah. Get your team here. We'll I, I will. We will definitely. We, we actually at NASDAQ have been doing team building online through Zoom and we are, um, you know, we're absolutely into that. So I think we can have a lot of fun with it. So we'll definitely talk later. Yes. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you so much. You bet.